Hey, thank you for checking out this video on the Microsoft Reactor YouTube channel. My name is Gwen. I'm a cloud developer advocate here at Microsoft. And the following is taken from a live stream that I did with Kevin Oliver, a machine learning engineer at the Octavian Group. Kevin has extensive experience with Bicep, which is an infrastructure as code tool for Microsoft Azure. And we're about to dive into a conversation on Bicep, tooling, parameter files, loops, and a bunch more tips and tricks that he's picked up along his way working with Bicep. The link to the entire live stream will be in the description, so be sure to check that out. Let's dive right in. How's it going, Gwen? I'm doing fantastic. Looking forward to talking about some Bicep. Yeah, we're, we're big fans of Bicep here. We just wrapped mm -hmm. up a little bit of an introductory uh, series on it, and we're going to dive a little deeper now with you. I know you're sort of a Bicep, um, what do you call those, like subject matter experts? Big fan, big fan <laughs> yeah. of Bicep, right? I know you've mm -hmm. uh, you had your fair share of um, troubleshooting and interesting scenarios with it from what you've told me, so I'm, I'm interested to see what you've got to share with us today. Uh, before we start, I would love for you to just give us an introduction. What do you do? How'd you get into bicep? All those kinds of things. Yeah, sure thing. So hi, everybody. My name is Kevin Oliver. I'm a machine learning engineer with the Octavian Technology Group. Um, as part of my job, I help our customers to embrace infrastructure as code as part of their journey to adopting DevOps and MLOps strategies. So trying to get everything deployed as much as possible with infrastructure as code really helps to make uh, everything smoother as we're getting resources deployed into Azure and uh, excited to dive into some of the things here that can help you do that much quicker. Awesome. Before we start, I do have a question. You've, so you primarily work now with Bicep, but have you had extensive experience with ARM? <laughs> uh, I started working with ARM okay. very shortly before Bicep came out. Mm -hmm. And uh, due to that, I definitely jumped right into the Bicep world. Um, anyone who's worked with ARM templates knows that there's a, a pretty steep learning curve coming into the product and really can be daunting if you're just starting out. So for me, uh, since Bicep was there and I saw some of the uh, possible future of where it was going, I decided I was going to jump right in and start learning then. Is, is Does Bicep have an easier learning curve, in your opinion, than, than something like ARM? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, the tooling that they've applied and um, created to, to help you create and build your Bicep files um, is fantastic. It really helps your development loop and your deployment uh, just increases the speed so much, so much faster. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Awesome. Uh, enough of my questions. Let's 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 dive in. We have a jam-packed session in terms of technical and hands-on. I would say this is more of like an intermediate level. Um, but if you are at all interested in Bicep, this is definitely a session for you. Kevin is going to do a great job at explaining. Uh, but let's go ahead and bring up your screen because I know uh, where is it? Uh, is your screen up here? Oh, there we go. Perfect. There we go. Uh, I think that is large enough. Chat. Let us know if you can see that. If you can't. Kevin might be able to zoom in just a little bit, but I mm -hmm. think that is good. Um, but yeah, let's 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 kick it off. Fantastic. All right. So before we jump into the code, I just wanted to give a real quick description or definition of Bicep that the Bicep team has set out on their GitHub repository. Uh, Bicep is a domain-specific language for deploying Azure resources declaratively. It helps to drastically simplify the authoring experience with a cleaner syntax, improved type safety, and better support for modularity and code reuse. Uh, Bicep really is built to help you deploy code in modules. So we have our, our main Bicep file, and then we can start segmenting our code out into modules to make our life easier and be able to really reuse our code without having to recreate it every time we have a new project. And so with that, we're going to sort of walk into our code that we have created today and see what we can do to apply some best practices to it and improve it and make it a little bit more module and reusable so that we don't have to rewrite this again the next time we have a new project that we're going to work on. So real quick, I'm just going to discuss some of the different components of the Bicep file for those who may be new to Bicep or, or uh, just want a little refresher. Uh, we're going to start out with our scoping. So every Bicep file should have a target scope of where it's going to be deployed to. In our case, we're deploying to a subscription, but we do have different locations that we can do this to. We can deploy to a management group, a research group, a subscription, or a tenant. In our case, we're going to be deploying out to a subscription. The next section here, we have our parameters, which are inputs that are going to get passed into our Bicep file from an external place. This might be if you're deploying via the Azure CLI or PowerShell or deploying your templates as part of a uh, Azure DevOps pipeline or 
GitHub Actions. Uh, these values also, if you don't add anything, uh, say you're deploying from the CLI with just your template, uh, it'll prompt you for each of these variables so that you can um, deploy your, uh, be able to deploy your template. Uh, this gives you a little flexibility in deciding maybe I wanted to deploy this template to my dev environment or my stage or prod. Uh, it can help you to customize uh, what is being deployed out into your environment at a given time. Our next section is our variables, and those are specific to this bicep template or any templates attached to it. Usually I use these to create um, naming standards for the resources that are gonna be deployed. In this case, we are creating a, a simple naming standard of product and then component and environment and location. So just able to give a nice consistency to the resources that we're deploying into this uh, Azure instance. And then next up, we have our resources, which are the primary things that you're deploying as part of, of BICEP. Uh, every resource represents some type of Azure service that um, you are deploying out into Azure someplace. Uh, in this case, we are deploying out our resource group, and we're also going to be deploying a virtual network in a um, BICEP module here in a second. Since we are deploying it to the subscription, when we're deploying our virtual network, we have to scope it to a different level. Since um, the resource group is where we want to create the virtual network inside of our resource group, we can't. We have to deploy it as part of a module. It can't be scoped to the same subscription level. We look at our virtual network real quick and a handy shortcut. If you just hold down control and left click, you can jump right into your virtual network file. So there's no need to have to go over to your documents to open your files manually there. I had no idea you could do that. That is yeah. cool. <laughs> There's some quick jumps. Uh, it really makes uh, jumping around files, especially mm -hmm. longer files, very useful. Um, so the same thing here. Module files are uh, should be uh, self-enclosed. You have all of your parameters and variables that you're going to be deploying, that you're going to use to deploy the resources inside of that file. So in our case here, we have, again, some parameters we're going to use to deploy our uh, virtual network. And we have our virtual network name and our subnet name. We're going to minimize this out of the way. And then you can see that we are deploying just a virtual network with a subnet. So the way that this is configured now, it, it's very static. It's very brittle. Um, it doesn't really allow us to be flexible and deploy, say, multiple subnets. If I wanted to do that, I would have to copy all of this code and create a new subnet and pass in a bunch of more parameters. So it doesn't offer us a lot of flexibility to be able to change up our code um, very easily. So we're going to try and make some improvements to this. Uh, our last thing here is our output. Uh, this is passing out the virtual network ID from our deployment. This can be used in later parts of a uh, Azure DevOps pipeline or GitHub Actions to access those resources or to be used in additional modules.